Hi there, it's AC Dodd again. Some of you may have heard of the AC Dodd Zero Tolerance Oil Pump. Well, if you want to know more, watch this video. So, oil pumps. The lifeblood of any decent engine revolves around getting oil to all its areas. And the oil pump's job is to make sure that happens efficiently and it happens um, as effectively as possible. The problem with oil pumps is over the years um, various suppliers have been making them and the prices are uh, you know vary and uh, generally they vary on the cheap side. The problem with cheap oil pumps is you don't get much engineering. So what I decided to do a good number of years ago now and anybody that's um, uh, bought one of my engines when I used to build them um will know that i used to modify the oil pumps in the engines that i built uh, to improve the uh, pickup and the uh, ability of the pump to um you know scavenge pump up after uh, starting the engine so it would it would more quickly gather the oil and build oil pressure um and have more consistent oil pressure so uh to that end um I looked at the standard pump and looked at a number of different pumps and to see what I could do to improve that. So basically, you know, there's nothing more complicated in a zero tolerance oil pump than actually, um, in you know, improving the tolerances of the as manufactured pump. Now, obviously, uh, the golden rule when you build an engine is, you know, never fit a second hand pump, always fit a new unit. So when I do my zero tolerance oil pumps, they're all based on a brand new pump. And I choose uh, those pumps as supplied by uh, mini spares. Uh, there's a typical unit there, the GLP 138. Uh, it's actually quite a cheap pump, uh, but for the money you get, this is actually uh, a very good starting point to build uh, a quality pump from. So all my zero tolerance pumps feature uh, the mini spares pump as a starting point. Um, you get a lot of pump for not a lot of money. In terms of uh, what we do with the pump, let's get into it. So what does the pump consist of when you take it apart? Well, here's one that I've stripped down. Um, and obviously you've got screws to hold the uh, pump together. You've got a main casting. Uh, which houses all the internal components. You've got the end cover, which uh, on these pumps is uh, ground steel on both sides. Um, sometimes people refer that as to a steel back pump. Well, the original original uh, pumps on the 1275 engine, of which this is a 1275 pump, uh, had the steel back, and this is no different. Uh, you've got the rotor and the annulus, uh, which... The relationship of these parts um, in terms of the operating clearances or the running clearances that uh, the annulus uh, to the body and the rotor to the annulus have and also uh, the end plate to the rotor and the whole assembly when it's together all determine the efficiency and how good that pump is when it's in use. So what goes into a zero tolerance oil pump um, when you buy one? Well. What we're going to do in this video is go through the process that I do with each one of these pumps um, so you can get an idea of the, um, the processes and uh, what it takes to make a zero tolerance pump. Now the first thing we'll notice uh, about this pump is it's actually dirty. Okay, So we've actually got some residue um, on that rotor, if you can see that there. That's actually uh, abrasive grit from the rumbling process, which is still on the pump. So the first thing we can learn about oil pumps, and this goes for any engine, not just an A-series, is never take an oil pump out of a box and just simply fit it to an engine. All right, the first thing you must do with any pump when you buy it is take it apart and clean it and make sure there's no abrasive inside it. The next thing we need to do is uh, go through and check its clearances. So let's start checking some clearances. So with the annulus installed in the uh, housing, what we're gonna look for is the uh, clearance between the annulus and the uh, casting. So take 
a feeler blade and this in this case it's three thousandths of an inch and then we just simply place that in the gap between the annulus and the um, casing and take a measurement now that slides in nice and easily so that would indicate that potentially that's a bit bigger than three thousandths of an inch so we'll take the four thousandth blade as you can see there four thousandths and we'll try that now that is much tighter and in fact i'm forcing it in so i would say that that is typically about three and a half hour clearance so the clearance between that ideal is about three uh, to four thou so this one is is perfect now when i've measured these pumps before um you know oil pumps vary the mini spares ones are very good but i have seen other brands of pumps with as much as 10 thou um you know there and i'll put a little bit, piece of video in now so you can actually see that this is a pump that was sent to me for modifications um, and as you can see uh, it didn't pass inspection because the uh, clearance from the annulus to the casing was simply uh, very large. This is about 8 to 9 thou and is uh, not acceptable. Moving on to another example, this is a brand new pump at the very much uh, budget end of the uh, product range and this one's got uh, 10 thou clearance which is basically junk right out of the box if you get a pump like this send it back and do not use it okay so the next clearance we want to check is the um, rotor to annulus so uh, basically it's the clearance between that finger and that annulus and again we use a feeler blade and we push it in and in this particular case we want to be seeing about four to five thousandths at the most some pumps will go six um, but in reality the tighter you can keep that the more pump inefficiency you're going to get now in this case i've got a five five thou feeler blade and it won't go in and that's an ideal clearance okay so with those sizes we can now move on to improving the efficiency of this pump Okay, so now what we need to do is check the end float. And to do this, we use some measuring equipment. So here I've got a uh, depth micrometer, which I'm going to put inside and measure the uh, distance from the outside of the casing down to the bottom. And in this case, I measure 564 and two tenths of a thou swapping over to my correctly uh, zeroed uh, outside micrometer we just simply measure the outside diameter of the internal components and in this case I get 559 and a half thou and if I measure the rotor I get 559 and 3 tenths. So that's a little bit smaller. And what that basically means is when you work that out, we've got almost five thousandths of an inch clearance um, between the components on the inside and the outer edge. So with that pump lid in place, there's a gap of five thousandths. That doesn't sound a lot, but actually, if we reduce that, we massively increase the scavenge ability of that pump. So what I do is I reduce that M float from five thou down to three thou. Okay, so you heard me talk about uh, removing about two thousandths of an inch um, from that pump casing. That's all well and good, but what is, you know, how much is two thousandths of an inch? Well, I'll show you. This is a micrometer, and if you look carefully, you'll see that I've got a hair in there, and that's a hair that I borrowed from my wife's head. Yes, she did react strangely when I asked her for it, but there is a reason. 
I've measured the diameter of that hair in the micrometer. And if you can see that, it's just about two thou plus nine tenths, so almost three thou of an inch. So that hair, or rather two thirds of that hair, is the difference between a normal pump and an AC Dodd Zero Tolerance pump. And that doesn't look like a lot, but that's the difference and the fine tolerance that's required to make those oil pumps pump much better than what they are when they're supplied. So when you build an engine, it's about knowing where the tolerances need to be. And it's about you as the builder adjusting those tolerances to get them where you want them to make the engine do what you want. It's most definitely not about taking things out of a box and just bolting them on. In order to machine this body off of this face, we need to make sure the rear side is flat. And uh, as you can see there, uh, and this is no different to others, uh, there's a few burrs and a few uh, bashed up edges. So the first thing we need to do is just run a, uh, a file, a flat file over that surface to clean that up. So we take our uh, casing, we take a flat file and we just gently rub around the bottom to take off any high spots. And this pump has got a few. So Now the scratch lines don't make it look very nice. But that's not the point. The point is, it's flat. Okay, so I've set up the uh, oil pump um, housing in the lathe. We've got it uh, attached to a, a mini face plate and a draw bar. And now we're just going to face off the uh, front. Where we had discrepancy with the thicknesses of the annulus and the rotor, here I'm lapping them down by hand uh, to make sure that they're both the same thickness. Okay, so back onto the pump housing. Um, what you want to do is have a look on the inside uh, around the ports and uh, see if there's any casting flash or sharp edges. And if there are, just take a, a little needle file and uh, file them out. Uh, in this case, we, we do have a couple of areas where there's flash, um, so I'll show you a close-up and then I will uh, remove. Here you can see a piece of the casting that's actually left um, uh, like a flap, and then I've taken a file to it, and this is the same part of the pump where I'll fold it off uh, nice and flush. So now we've got the uh, housing done, uh, we can bring in the rotor and annulus and then we can see from the uh, finish that left on from the lapping uh, and we can verify now, which I've just measured using my micrometer, that uh, these two are three thousandths of an inch um, lower than the height of that lid so that we've achieved our goal so let's uh, now clean this up get rid of all the abrasive and make sure that's spotlessly clean and reassemble okay everything fitted inside so now what we've got we've got the uh, right rotor to load clearance the right annulus to housing clearance and now we've even got the right end float so when we put that together that pump is going to work perfectly so with the oil pump reassembled, I put everything back inside, oiled everything up, and then fitted the uh, steel cover. With the oil in it, it now rotates beautifully smoothly, like night light silk. Uh, you know, obviously no rattles. Um, that is all within spec, and not only within spec, it's tighter than it was when it left the factory, uh, and it's actually tighter than the original uh, Rover spec as well. So. Uh, that pump will scavenge very effectively, better than they ever did when they left the factory. 
So what's all the fuss then about these oil pumps? What, you know, we've gone through what I do, but why do I do it? Well, this next little piece of video is from uh, Ross Thomas at Thomas Classic and Modern. And uh, he's just taken the video to show uh, how fast an engine gets its oil pressure on a fresh build uh, fitted with one of these zero tolerance oil pumps. Um, of particular note, you'll notice that the battery used in this test wasn't particularly uh, full of energy. Uh, so it's quite a slow crank, but you could also see uh, in just a few revolutions that these oil pumps build pressure quickly. I hope you like that video thanks very much for watching uh, if you're interested in purchasing one of those pumps then uh, they're not available direct from me you need to contact Thomas Classic and Modern in Wales uh, or RS Motorsports um, up in Glasgow uh, Robert Stewart there um, contact them directly uh, either by Facebook or via the internet um, and they'll give you a price for a pump anyway hopefully you found that interesting and as ever like and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you very much.